What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another story time video. Um, this is this is a bit of a doozy. This 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 story is going to be one of the craziest nights of my entire life, if not the craziest. Um, a lot of shit went down. Um, before before I start this, I want to preface the video saying that I I don't condone. Uh, taking drugs anymore. I've been sober for five years now. I was really lucky to have the support I had and the opportunities I had to get out of where I was in life. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot of crazy stories and memories that can kind of serve to glorify all of it. But for each good story, there are many, many really horrible stories that would make your toes curl. Um, not a life I would personally recommend. So if you're young, take this story with a grain of salt. Be good. Don't do drugs. It's not, it's not fucking cool. Okay. It doesn't make you cool to do drugs. It makes you a fucking loser. Anyways, you can smoke weed. It's legal pretty much everywhere now. Go for it. Mushrooms aren't that bad either. Which is what this story is about. <laughs> oh, bad way to start the video. Um, okay. Boring stuff's over. Uh, let's get into what we're all here for. So this night was a long, crazy, eventful night um, that I could probably turn into one of those like Project X type movies where it's just like epic story kind of thing. You, I could probably write a book on this night. I could probably make a movie out of this night, but fuck it, I'm saving it all for you guys, just based on all the stupid and crazy shit that happened. Uh, so for a little preface to why this night got so out of hand so fast, this is the first time that me and my friends ever decided to try mushrooms. All right, uh, for anyone who's ever done mushrooms, you'll know that a lot of stories people tell about being on mushrooms are kind of bullshit. Um, unless they're laced with something else, you don't really see anything that just straight up isn't there. Um, you won't see like little green men running around or big purple elephants, unless there's a big fucking purple elephant with purple light shining on it, then you might actually see that. But you don't generally see things that aren't actually there. It just, distorts the things that are there and makes them look all wavy and trippy looking and kind of fucks with your color like the colors that you're seeing i guess you could say uh that being said i'm fairly certain these were laced with something <laughs> uh i don't know what i didn't know much about drugs at the time uh but this was way more intense than any other mushroom trip i've ever had uh, maybe you can chalk that up to it being the first time i ever did mushrooms i, I don't think so because usually when i did mushrooms i did them few and like far between so that I would have all of those, um, what the fuck's it called? So that I would feel the full extent of the drug the next time I did it because mushrooms, you want to kind of feel the full extent. If you do mushrooms two days in a row, the second day, you're not really going to feel too much. You've burned through all that chemical that's in your system and it's not really going to affect you as much. And yes, I've tried it two days in a row, did pretty much nothing, very, very little. Anyways, so yeah, this was way more intense than any other mushroom trip I've ever had, and I've had quite a few. Um, so I'm pretty sure these were laced with something. Um, like I said, this is the first time I'm ever trying mushrooms, so I have no idea how much to take. Uh, a normal person trying a new drug for the first time, maybe take a gram or two, engage it all from there. Not me, I was a go-getter. Um, so, <laughs> so I took five grams, I rolled it up in two slices of pizza, and I downed that shit like I was Sasha Gray working on her PS de Resistance. Um, this was my first mistake of the night. <laughs> All my other friends took like two to three grams each, except for one friend who decided not to take any. Um, remember this friend, because without him being the dickhead that he is and was, uh, this story would have been way less interesting, in my opinion. Um, I'm not gonna give away any actual names, so we'll call this friend uh, Kareem. Uh, the two friends I took mushrooms with would be uh, John and Fats. <laughs> this is fucking stupid. Anybody who knows who these people actually are <laughs> will understand these names. Anyone who doesn't, won't. Uh, so yeah. So, so we all take our shrooms, except Kareem, and we're at Kareem's place. Okay, so understand, Kareem's dad's pretty well off, and he's never, never, never home. He, he was in real estate, I think. He also owned, like, a parking garage and shit like that. Um, but yeah, so he was never home, and then my buddy Kareem just had, like, a full-size house, basically, to himself. 
to himself all the time. This is right after high school. None of us really live on our own yet. Um, so yeah, his dad's place was, was pretty big. And yeah, basically we just had this house that was just always there for us to kind of chill at and do whatever we want. Um, so after probably like 20, maybe 25 minutes, um, we notice Fats starts giggling at something outside the window. <laughs> um, we won't get into that right now, but just remember this. He's just giggling at something outside the window. Um, none of us were really paying attention to it. We just kind of noticed it. John starts giggling, starts like getting giggly next. And they're both laughing like idiots, thinking everything is hilarious. I'm sitting there sober as all hell. It's been over half an hour since we took them. So I'm getting pissed off at this point. I decide, fuck it. I'm going to go home. This is late because it hasn't kicked in yet. <laughs> so I get in my car and I start to drive home. This was my second mistake of the night. <laughs> Not like one minute into my drive home and I get hit by a fucking freight train of high. I am so goddamn high. <laughs> Any other time I've taken mushrooms, it's been like a gradual kind of build up to a peak and then like a slow kind of come down. No, sir. My brain completely fucking melted in an instant. Uh, it's October. It's like 9 or 10 p.m. I'm pretty sure at night. It's dark. I'm in my death machine contemplating space and time. And the streetlights are bending inwards <laughs> on each side of the road, making like a tunnel over the road. <laughs> the traffic lights are so fucked. Have you, have you ever played red light, green light as a kid? You know, and it's like, okay, red light, red light red light and then somebody says green light and you start moving forward and then you said they turn around and say red light and they try to catch people moving you know what i mean that game okay try playing that shit with quadruple vision and every fucking color of the rainbow i could have sworn these were the brightest traffic lights in the country they were so fucking bright they were burning into my fucking retinas so i sat at the light for what felt like hours because i genuinely didn't know when to go they must have changed 20 or 30 times while, I'm, while my dumb ass is sitting there staring at them like they're trying to explain quantum mechanics to me using an etch -a sketch okay i was so lost so eventually i was able to find the sanity for a moment <laughs> to drive back to kareem's house probably at about five kilometers an hour so slow i drove back to kareem's house i get there i get inside and everyone just bursts out laughing at me i have no fucking clue what's so funny but i burst out laughing too and the night just fucking starts from there uh so i had to go take a piss and like to this day this piss is the single most messed up i've ever been at one particular time by far putting into words what i experienced in this bathroom isn't really possible i'll do my best um but i was just completely out of my mind uh this piss in particular is what made me think the shrooms may have been laced with something um i'll do my best but but yeah here it goes so i i get in the bathroom close the door i start to piss first off felt amazing to the point where my head like rolled back okay so my head's rolled back and all of a sudden i'm looking at myself in third person quick little break in the story in case you're actually watching the gameplay right here even though i was having a great fucking run or, or a decent run a much better run than episode two that came out yesterday um i was on that level and i'll, I'll replay like a little clip of the video here but i reset the level and then i got a bad first touch so i reset the level again immediately and i guess those two resets were too close together and i ended up restarting the entire course i was fucking pissed so for the rest of this gameplay it's pretty much just me do you fucking mind phone it's just me fucking fucking around in this map not even trying for a decent time anymore <laughs> I was I was not happy. I was pretty pissed off. Anyways, back to the story. I'm taking a piss. Don't try to. I'm taking a piss and I'm just annihilated. Go full on like out of body experience. And I'm looking at myself kind of like over the shoulder. I guess you could say, like I'm playing fucking Resident Evil or something. Um, but my entire field of view 
is made up of those building blocks with the letters on them that babies play with. I don't know if you know what I mean. I'll try to show a picture of them right here. Um, <clears throat> and they're just sitting in place and spinning. Um, <laughs> I know this probably doesn't make too much sense. So to be clear, all I can see is these blocks spinning in place. Their colors and like shape make up me taking a piss. Uh, you probably can't see what I see in my head. I have a very specific like memory of this. Um, but yeah, you probably... I'm probably making no sense right now, and that's kind of normal. Um, anybody who's taken mushrooms knows it's, it's not super easy to explain what you're seeing or what you're feeling. Um, but yeah, it was super surreal. I've never experienced anything like it since that day. Uh, it was legitimately an, an out-of-body experience, and yeah, anyways, it was, it was fucking nuts. So anyways, um, I finish, I finish up, I head back to my friends. We're sitting at the table. Me and John are playing our own improvised version of who's on first. Um, I don't know if you guys know what who's on first is. Uh, it's like, a who, who are those guys? I think it's Abbott and Costello. I could be wrong. Anyways, they have this skit where they do, it's called who's on first. Basically the guy who's on first name is who the guy who's on seconds name is what? Um, so the guy is one, one of them's asking the other guy who's on first and the guy's like, yeah, who's on first. He's like, that's what I'm asking you. Who's on first. On our team, we have who's on first. What's on second. I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find and out. That, the guy's name. And that, uh -huh. That's what I want to find out. The guy's name. I'm telling you who's on first. What's on second. I don't know who's on third. Now, Abby, you want to be the manager of the baseball team? Yes. You know the guy's name? Well, I should. Well, now you tell me the guy's name's on the baseball I team. I say who's on first. What's on second. I don't know who's on third. You ain't saying nothing to me yet. Go ahead and tell me. <laughs> The guy playing first base. Who is on first, Lou? What are you asking me for? Oh, don't get excited. I'm saying who... I'm asking you a simple question. Who's on first? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. That's it. That's who? <laughs> I'm asking you, what's the guy's name on first oh, base? Oh, no. What's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? One base at a time. <laughs> Anyways, it, it's a stupid fucking skit. You can look it up if you want. I'm pretty sure it's Abbott and Costello. And it's just called Who's on First. I had never seen this before, so I was just guessing at what the fucking thing was about. <laughs> I've never actually watched it at the time. Um, so me and, and who was it? John. I'm pretty sure it was John. Yeah, John. <laughs> me and John are literally just improvising who's on first. And have you ever laughed so hard that your nostrils start flaring erratically and uncontrollably? This is me or like right now. <laughs> We're just laughing so fucking hard. Doing our own improvised version. That probably made zero sense whatsoever. <laughs> of who's on first. Um, Fats is still staring out the fucking window. Laughing like an idiot. And Kareem, being the piece of shit that he is, is melting my Game Boy Advance with a cigarette. I didn't notice this. I didn't notice until I was sober the next day. Or the day after that. Whatever. Um, but yeah, anyways. I wish I had a picture of that Game Boy. I'd show you the, the melting. I had it for so long after I stopped using it. But it literally had this big melted like thing on like the cover of it. I was pissed. Anyways, eventually John and I noticed Fats laughing at the window. So we asked him what he's laughing at. So he tells us there's a... <laughs> he tells us there's a squirrel by the pool dancing. Okay, so, so me and John are like, you're an idiot. Stop lying. There's no way you see that. Because like you're not that hot. You can't just see something that's not there. So we get up to look at the window. And the fucking terror that filled the two of us in that moment was more intense than anything i've ever felt in my entire life there was something standing by the pool and just kind of shaking it was like it looked like something from fucking silent hill understand it it's it's like dark out so we can't really make out what it is i didn't know if it was a baby in a fucking cloak or a fucking animal eating something and ripping it to pieces but it was a fucking threat and i felt that shit to my core so I'm screaming, what the fuck? The thing's gonna fucking eat us. I'm losing my mind. John is losing his shit now. Now that we're freaking the fuck out, Fats no longer finds this the least bit funny. <laughs> All three of us are losing our shit and Kareem is basically ignoring the whole situation. Which probably should have been a precursor. So probably should have tipped us off that it was nothing to worry about. But anyways, so the next logical step is to get weapons and kill the demon. Uh, I grabbed two butter knives because I'm a smart kid and I realized that I'm high. I shouldn't play with actual knives or I might hurt myself. So the next logical choice for killing a rabid toddler are akimbo butter knives. Um, 
<clears throat> John grabs a hockey stick and Fats has it in his racket and we're fucking ready to die. This is war and we are the front line, <laughs> okay? We slide the door open. We're slowly all going out into the backyard. As we get closer, we're all starting to realize this is not something alive at all. Um, yeah, it was one of those pool cleaning brushes that you like put into the pool and it cleans the bottom of the pool on its own. It just goes around, along the bottom of the pool. Well, it was like kind of leaning out of the pool and it was in the way of one of the jets, like the pool jets. So there was, and there was like a, like a net that was like on top of it. <laughs> so it just kept moving back and forth and it was just kind of like waving back and forth. <laughs> yeah, we were stupid and I. <laughs> So my friends go back inside. For whatever reason, I want to explore the backyard. This was my thir third mistake. Yeah, third mistake. Um, very soon after that, I was no longer in the backyard. I was roaming around the outside of the house. Uh, naturally, this led me to the neighbor's backyard because, I mean, where the fuck else am I going to go? Um, now, understand, <clears throat> this particular neighbor's grass must not have been cut in forever. Um, so I'm walking through the grass and I said, I want to lay down or just look at the stars. It's, that's a completely valid thing to want to do. I lay down, turn my head to the side. What the fuck? I'm in a goddamn rainforest. See, the grass was taller than my head. So all I could really see was grass. So I'm looking through just nothing but grass as soon as I turn my head to the side. All I could really see was grass. But to me, it was a wonderful utopia of lush gardens and trees and shit. It was fucking great. So great that I laid there for a fucking hour and a half. <laughs> I didn't realize this. It felt like no time had passed. Now the part that was a little messed up was my friends were looking for me for about an hour and were tripping balls trying to find me. Not good. Um, after an hour, I start hearing Fats calling my name. Only to me, it's not Fats. I could have sworn to this day, it was my dad calling my name. So I sit up insanely fast and I'm now freaking the fuck out. I don't need my dad seeing me this fucked up. I don't know what the fuck to do, but I finally decide, fuck it, I'm already caught, I'm already fucked, dude. let's get this shit over with. So I go over to The Voice, find Fats, and we both burst out laughing like idiots. <laughs> oh, God, this story. <laughs> so, remember how I said Kareem was a dickhead and without him this night would be way less interesting? Here's why. We meet up with John in, in the front yard and head inside. But fucking Kareem locked the door and went to bed. Zero fucks given about the three of us. It's fucking October in Ontario, Canada. So it's a little chilly. It's like midnight, maybe 1 a.m. We're fucking peaking at this point with nowhere to go. So we're like, where do we go? What the fuck do we do? This just turned into a survival mission. We need food, water, and shelter. So we start walking aimlessly. We walk, and we walk, and we walk, and we walked. We walked, and talked, and laughed at shit for about three hours. Nothing super eventful happened during this massive walk, but eventually Fast decides he's just going to go home. So we walk him home, which, by the way, is not close at all. It was half hour one way, and then about half hour back to Kareem's house. Uh, I can't fucking go home. It's 4 a.m., and I am still fucking destroyed. Um... Fats is now home, and it's just John and I, okay? So it just just me and John left. <clears throat> so we walk all the way back to Cream's house, which is about 45 minutes away. Uh, no, maybe about half an hour from, from Fats' house. Uh, all the way back to Cream's house um, and decide we need to get inside the house somehow. It's just, just That's just what has to happen. Uh, so we're checking windows and all the doors, trying to guess the garage code, literally debating if we should break a window. Um, so we decide, fuck it, we'll sleep outside. <laughs> we're gonna sleep outside, but it's fucking cold out now. Um, we're obviously gonna need to build a fire because I mean, we can't freeze to death. So what are we supposed to do? Gotta build a fire, but how, with what? Um, so I suggest let's walk up and down the streets Till we find someone storing wood for their fireplaces. Then we'll have wood. Because that's like a thing that happens a lot in Canada. And probably colder states as well. People just have like pre-cut wood. That they use for like bonfires. And like their fireplaces and shit like that. <clears throat> so I'd say like. One in ten houses probably has this. In, in October. In Ontario, Canada. Where I live. So we start searching. And like pretty fast. We find a house with the tarp on the side. 
uh, other house in the backyard. So I was like, fuck yeah, score. That's That's got to be wood underneath that tarp. It has to be. Um, so I go to jump this fence. <laughs> and the biggest fuck you dog just jumps right up against the chain link <laughs> fence that I'm trying to jump. It's barking and it's snarling like you couldn't imagine. I'm still pretty goddamn high. So this dog's face was all warped and moving and I let out probably the most feminine scream you've ever heard in your entire life. I fall back onto the fucking ground and we just book it back to Kareem's place. Back to square one. Not leaving again because danger. Um, so what the fuck do we do? So we get back to Kareem's place and we're... We go into the backyard to see if we can find supplies for survival. Well, there are these like long, uh, like pool mats, I guess you could call them. The like floaty mats that you can like lie on. What are those called? I don't know what they're called. Anyways, doesn't matter. Um, we can use those as blankets and as a mattress. So that's amazing. We're good to go. But now we need fire. And in a moment of pure genius and complete disregard for dickhead Kareem, uh, I look over to the fence. I'm like, hey, John. Fence is made of wood. Why don't we just make a fire with that? Fucking genius. So we go over to the fence and start fucking shredding that, that bitch. We're ripping off pieces of wood and chucking them in a pile on the ground next to the pool. <laughs> Finally, we decide we've got enough wood. So we sit down, make a little teepee, and then look around for some paper. We end up finding like um, some string. So we kind of rip that up a bit. And, and we built a fucking fire in this idiot's backyard. <laughs> we stack all the wood <coughs> we have on, um, on it and we just go to bed. I slept like a fucking baby on that concrete with our fire. It was fucking amazing. I was so goddamn proud of myself. We woke up the next morning to Kareem freaking the fuck out about his dad's fence and we could not have cared less. I grabbed my shit from inside and I walked home immediately. I didn't even talk to him. I was so mad that he left us out there all night while we were just destroyed. Just such a fucked up thing to do to somebody you, you, you call a friend. You know what I mean? So fuck that guy. Not even worried about him. One last quick pause. Look at this flip reset. I was so happy when I hit this. You can see how much I was freaking out just by what I'm doing with my controller. I was so goddamn stoked. I, I don't know if you saw the time change at the top, but I cut out about four minutes of me just trying to hit this skip, <laughs> just fucking around. And then when I finally hit it, it's with this fucking flip reset <laughs> with like two uh, it was It was nice. Anyways, back to the end of this story. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I went straight to bed and I slept all day. I woke up at like seven o'clock that night. I was still fucking high. This high would not fucking go away. Uh, there was no force in the world that would make me leave the house again because fuck that. Um, so I decided, decided to start watching TV. I put on the movie, uh, lock stock and two smoking barrels cause it was free on demand. Um, <laughs> I laughed so fucking hard at this movie. Um, I thought it was the greatest comedy I've ever seen. To this day, couldn't tell you what the movie's about or if it's even a comedy. It doesn't sound like a comedy. I think I've talked to people about it. They said it's, it's kind of funny, but it's not like a comedy. Um, but yeah, still haven't seen it again to this day. No idea what it's about. I'm pretty sure I own it now too, actually. Um, I pass out afterwards and I wake up in the morning. That's correct. In the morning, okay? Finally sober again. I slept like over 24 hours in a, like a 48 hour period. Um, but yeah, finally sober again. And that is the craziest night I've ever had in my life by far. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was entertaining to hear about. Um, I don't know how many more stories I have like this. How many more videos I could do a story time. I'm hoping you guys still enjoyed this one. If you want another one, I can try to think of something. Um, there's, there's gotta be something. It's a really, really fine line between stories that I can tell and have people still respect me as a human and stories that are just over the line and like, ooh, Andrew, that's kind of fucked up. You shouldn't have told us that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so 
I, it's hard to find the stories that are right right up against that line, but haven't crossed it. I would say that this this, this story is right up against that line, but doesn't actually cross it. I wasn't I wasn't a bad guy in this story. Kareem is just a dickhead, so we destroyed his friends. I wish I could give you guys a picture, but it would be very difficult. It's probably been fixed by now too. Actually, I don't even know if his dad still lives there. I don't think he does. Um, but yeah, when I say we destroyed his fence, so picture you know those wooden fences. It's got like the thick pieces of wood at the bottom and then at the top it has like the crisscrossed wood we ripped the crisscrosses out we didn't destroy the full fence you couldn't like walk into the neighbor's backyard we didn't destroy it that much we just ripped out a bunch of the crisscrosses um so yeah there was that but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed it uh if you do want another story time video make sure you let me know uh, if there's any games you would like to see me play, make sure you let me know. Check out all those socials in the description uh, below, and you can check me out on Twitch as well. I love you all. Thank you for hanging out for my, my night of debauchery, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.